Hello and welcome to this session on career prospects for becoming an embedded systems engineer. Embedded systems engineer role is a very dream job for any electronics or electrical engineering student. Let's discuss today what are the requirements, job profiles, career aspects, how to study, how to go about, how to become an effective embedded systems engineer in anybody's career. As Albert Einstein said, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. This applies very clearly to the embedded systems engineers career profile. If you see the core jobs, you will either be working as a design engineer or an R&D engineer or an embedded engineer a network support engineer. Core jobs will be similar to these titles. But if you see the job roles, you will exactly be programming the latest microcontrollers. You know, right from uh, the ARM processors to 8051 family microcontrollers to the most advanced uh, microcontrollers of Raspberry Pi, all these kind of uh, microelectronics. So you should be a good in programming and interfacing part of uh, microcontrollers. And then kernel level programming is also very, very important. Implementing the real-time operating uh, systems, then different communication protocols, most common uh, communication uh, protocols like I square C, and then CAN protocols and different types of protocols. You should have a minimum knowledge. And then the working environment, whether you will be working on a um, open source Linux or other uh, thing, Unix or Windows or any typical working environment is also equally important. And you should be good at using the drivers like USB, Wi-Fi, GSM, etc. Then if you see the job requirements, the candidate is expected to be good in basic analog circuit design, you know, basic RLC circuits. Uh, you should be good in designing uh, these kind of things, you know, simple, digital electronics, uh, probably um, a thorough, uh, of thorough understanding of the book, uh, Maurice Mano, and uh, first uh, five to six chapters. Uh, so up to, you know, the combinational logic gates, sequential logic gates, and then adders, full adders, and up to the design of, uh, you know, multiplexers. And th these kind of uh, things, uh, you should be very, good in concepts then analog electronics basic power supply uh, concepts you know the op amp characteristics how you'll be using op amps in different applications signal conditioning part of it and then the embedded systems on its own uh, right how you will be um, using the microcontrollers uh, kind of thing family of microcontrollers uh, the basic principles these are all very very required then again communications right how you will be communicating among different uh, ports, different systems, how you will be uh, conveying the signal, okay? Serial processing or uh, uh, parallel processing, parallel ports, serial ports, like similarly signal processing. So a given signal is available um, uh, for you and then how you will be processing that signal, whether you know in, in terms of uh, um, uh, the impedance levels, how you will be impedance matching the system, how you will be, uh, you know, converting the signal from digital to analog, analog to uh, digital, and then how you will be amplifying the signal, how you will be rectifying the signal, how you will be, uh, you know, um, pro communicating over a period of wired or wireless, and these are all processing uh, knowledge you should have. And then again, minimum knowledge on control systems. You know, what are the difficult, uh, what are the different, uh, closed loop and open loop control systems, a typical proportional PID controls, how they will be working the fundamental knowledge. Then again on networking, right? Different networking protocols. So networking layers and a networking architecture and this kind of thing. Then interfacing protocols. So with the different microcontrollers, if you are interfacing, well, which protocol is best, which protocol is fast, more accessible, all these things. Then apart from this, the major stress on embedded C. And nowadays you can also be good at Python and fundamental knowledge on MATLAB, LabVIEW, 
real time operating system and the kernel programming would be of great advantage and adding to all these a prospective embedded systems engineer is expected to be good in quantitative aptitude you know logical reasoning and minimum verbal and non verbal um, english part of it and this is also uh, very very these are the major requirement to become a very good embedded systems engineer when if you see the applications uh, of industries where the embedded systems engineer will be employed is in test and measurement industries where you will be developing design and development of uh, uh, test and measurement like function generator cro's and many all these set up uh, then then consumer electronics you know you have whole lot of consumer electronics uh, whether they are uh, televisions you know washing machines whole lot of consumer electronics uh, spectrum the internet of things is very very important nowadays because with the smart cities smart buildings precision agriculture industrial iot and you have a and everywhere iot is coming into thing and that's where embedded system engineer plays a very important role in that and robotics is another spec another area another sub domain uh, where the embedded systems engineer will have a very uh, major role and of course medical electronics because most of the medical devices are embedded with uh, different uh, configurations nowadays then automotive this is a very important uh, field for any embedded engineer because automobiles um, are the major uh, domains where embedded systems are employed for the years to for the uh, past few years and in future because with self driving cars and electric cars in the market and you will have more and more of uh, uh, you will have more the weight of electronics will be much more than the weight of any other single metal um or any solid uh, in a driving in a given car that's the strength of um, you know embedded systems in automotives then you have wearable gadgets you have uh, almost uh, everything you are getting right from watches to rings or um yeah, you know bracelets and everywhere you have the electronic gadgets supporting your healthcare uh, parameters uh, where everyone is interested now then energy systems is another domain Uh, where you will have a more applications of embedded systems engineer in terms of power stations solar wind batteries because solar wind uh, have a very direct relationship with batteries because the power that you are generating uh, you should be charging into the batteries and the charge controllers efficient design and control uh, of charge carriers plays a very important role in solar and wind and power stations the industrial power control uh, process control is a very important uh, domain when it comes to embedded uh, systems in terms of uh, plc programmable logic controllers how you will be designing the programmable logic controllers then scada supervisory control um, of um, um, data acquisition system and uh, then automation process automation altogether so all these are the typical applications where embedded systems will engineers will be most sought after then if you see the private companies employing uh, the embedded systems engineers you have hewlett packard and now you have a dxc also then agilent technologies mostly in uh, test and measurements honeywell in process controls national semiconductors tata lc texas instruments robert bosch lnt infotech lg electronics siemens nvidia graphics scient technologies similar to this there are all these uh, you have several such companies uh, which will be employing uh, embedded systems engineer with 2 to 3 years experience is most sort of sort after them and how to study uh, when you are doing be good at uh, microprocessor uh, fundamentals take one book and uh, be good at microprocessor architecture first then go on to studying the microcontrollers interfacing concepts and then uh, how to uh, you know uh, basically uh, create the you know, interfacing among different gadgets with a microcontroller and you should be good at thing and then uh, do worked out examples in all these textbooks in terms of uh, interfacing and applications and exercises at the end of each chapter like i keeps telling uh, first you should do the every chapter in every engineering textbook that you study first study the concept then do the workout examples and then solve all the exercises at the end of each chapter if each chapter is basically divided into three parts one you have a hypothesis principles then you have the worked out examples 
where you are applying, where the author is applying the concepts explained in terms of a worked out example or a real time working examples. Then you have exercises at the end, which are nothing but the technologies, different techniques of applying the concepts to a real time world. And that's exactly the importance of exercises. And unfortunately, most of the engineers miss this part of exercises because they don't ever go beyond the worked out examples. And most of the engineering and technology is there and at the end of each chapter. So the best way to master it, do all the exercises at the end of each chapters, which alone develops the design and development skills. That's the best way of developing the design and development skills. Then application and interfacing skills, you should be good at it or you will get it only when you solve the exercises at the end of each chapters. Then programming on system domains, that's also equally important. You see programming, Python, Java, anything, don't ever read the program and write the program. You always execute the program in system domains. You have most of, nowadays you have almost um, open source uh, system domains where you can execute the code and see the result. And that's exactly important. Only then you will become a real uh, programmer. So always practice, practice, practice programming because no programming language can be learned without practicing and without executing. That's very, very important. Then anyway, this is a, a most uh, important thing is regular practice on quantitative aptitude right from the beginning. Whenever you find time, try to solve at least a few problems on different aspects of quantitative aptitude, whether you call logical reasoning, you know, verbal and non-verbal English comprehension, this, these are all uh, very, very important. This is how you can study to become an embedded systems engineer. Then for this, you have a number of online resources right from NPTEL, uh, National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning, uh, which is basically a project uh, executed by Indian Institute of Technology and Institute of Science. And then um, embedded system certification courses you have from Coursera, Udemy, Pluralsight, and Udacity, given by Georgiatech. Then you have spoken tutorial from IIT Bombay. Then Code Tantra is another wonderful platform where you can you can type Code Tantra and .com, practice, uh, register with them, and uh, study, uh, practice the programming on this domain. They have right from C, Python, Java, you know, uh, blockchain, uh, the big data. Hadoop, all these things you can practice in this. So Amulya's Academy is another um, wonderful uh, academy which is giving free online lectures. You have Edureka and Naresh High Technology also. You have the uh, all the technical and uh, quantitative aptitude tech YouTube videos available and AICT approved online platforms are there and uh, they're all certification based and online YouTube videos are available free of course. So, you can access all these online resources and continuously uh, update yourself uh, you know, to build up that exponential mindset that is required for embedded systems engineer. So with that, and I think uh, I wish you all the best and uh, see that you practice and you become a, a very sound and prospective embedded systems engineer for this world.